Hi, I'm Malik. I'm not even caught up to One Piece, but yeah, I'm here to make another video. And today, I gotta say, is Joy Boys a fraud? Joy Boy is an evil one? He likes everybody? And before you say, Malik, why are you watching this? You know, I haven't caught up. Technically, I am partially caught up because I do see like every single chapter when it comes out for like the past like month now. So I know like a tad bit of stuff. But but so like before that, because I'm at like Wano right now, like pre-raid, I just don't know like the beginning of Wano. I mean, beginning of Ekhead. All right, that's like just about that. But anyways, I'm just gonna stay up to date at this point. I, I really don't care. But Joy Boy is a liar, a schemer, the fraudulent one. That's worse than Shanks. Why is that? Let's check it out. I wasn't... Angel Weapon Uranus is okay. finally here. Vegapunk keeps up the insane reveals, right. including about why Joy Boy could have been evil. The evil. elders finally know where the Denden Den Mushi they're looking for is What's and a... what OP character is protecting. What's a Denden Den Mushi? What? Protecting it like and more fruit? happens in this insane chapter, What's so make Den sure Den stay Mochi? tuned for that. Chill Pirate King within and smash that like button if you enjoy oh, seeing I'm, I'm these movies reviews on the channel and want to keep like them coming. Mind. Make this the video you joined the Nakama by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Spoilers and all. So this yeah. chapter called Conflict. Guys, there are spoilers. Spoilers are bad. Do not spoil yourself, okay? Facts starts where the last one left off with reactions to Vegapunk's words when mm -hmm. he told everyone that the war that Joy Boy the first pirate and his crew were fighting against what became right. the world government is still going on to this day. That still? war led to the sea rising 200 meters and now the rising has begun again. Crazy to think right. that what happened to Lelucia. And that's why our long stocks are at its all time high. Zawada is real. Even though Yo, actually, I can't see a fisherman on top. That was the one meter horrible. rise, and Doflamingo said most cities would be wiped out My with an extra tweaking. five meters. So imagine how much people suffered back then. And also imagine True. how strong and influential Joy Boy and his crew might have been if the world government ended up having to use it 200 times. Mm -hmm. Insane to think about. And that's clearly not an option this time around because most of humanity and dry land for that matter would not survive that again. That's we true. see more reactions and people are asking about this war from 800 years ago people say and i quote the war from 800 years ago is still going on where but no one from that time Wait, is he can read japanese because i know that symbol right here it looks like an apple this is an a right it just says i don't know what this is it goes ah 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 uh, i think this is a u no wait that's also an a wait what the heck it's just a big ah uh... Like, ah, uh, okay, I'm losing it. I'm the war from 800 years ago is still going on. Where? Really? But no one from that time is even alive My anymore. Why is a war that no one knows of still going on? Megapunk, end quote. Now we know that of course there are people slash creatures like Zunesha, the ancient giant, and probably Facts. Emu who were around that. And even more people who know of that war and were also around for a very long time like the Five Elders. But it makes sense that most people would rationally assume that everyone from that time who knows about this war is dead. So in theory, there should be no one left mm -hmm. to continue waging that That's old true. war. But there is nothing rational about all this. As Vegapunk continues talking, we see Emu in the Room of Flowers walking to a portrait. Y'all think Emu got a giat on her? Let's be for real. Or Emu could be a dude. So if Emu's a dude, then I take back everything I just said. If it's not a dude, then the question still stands. Uh, if it's a dude, no diddy. Half hidden in a shadow of a lady who looks similar to Vivi. So Vivi. this could be a proper image of Vivi's ancestor, Nefertari D. Who is Nefertari? That does not look like Vivi. What are you talking about? Bro, it's black and white. If that was Vivi, it would have blue hair. That's like obvious. Vivi. So this could be a proper image of Vivi's ancestor, Nefertari D. Lily, the one who betrayed the other monarchs. But if we were hoping Emu would give us a definitive answer, we'd be sorely mistaken. All we get from Emu is another, and I quote, dot dot dot, end quote. Man, these dot dot dots are killing me. But I guess it <laughs> yeah, is building the suspense, that. and it wouldn't really make sense in the world of the story for Emu to just tell us everything we want to know right here. The time has come for you to get your driver's license. But before you hit- Okay, yo, this is just personal. 
Yo, why is it? Why does it know? Yo, that's weird. What Speaking the of the Nefertari, we jump okay. to Alabasta and we see Igaram and Karu crying over Vivi's missing poster, which is adorable. Thankfully, we know she's safe with Morgans at the moment, and there are Mo more Morgan pressing matters for the world government, obviously, than Morgan tracking D. her Burns. down right now. Meanwhile, on a more also, somber... did you guys know One Piece takes place in the span of like a like two years? Like everything that happens in One Piece happens like consecutively, like bam, 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 bam. Think about like how Luffy got that strong that fast. Like what? Note: We see Pell and Chaka standing next one year, to King like Cobra's that. too. As we know, Emu killed him, and Flame Emperor no, Sabo, no. despite his best efforts, failed to save him. Vegapunk then reveals that he realized a fraction of Mother Flame was stolen, and right. it was used to fuel yes, one of the ancient. I know about this stuff. All right, so don't say I'm like, yeah, what's you spoiling? So I already know. Okay. I already know. Weapons. And as he speaks about ancient weapons, we see Momo and Crocodile, who himself has been obsessed with ancient weapons since the beginning. Before now, why is Momo and Crocodile? Dropped, I saw a Reddit post notification recently about how Cross Guild and Rayleigh reactions haven't been shown yet, and people wondering why. But it's funny how Oda gives us both right here in the very I next chapter. Wonder, we'll get like, to Rayleigh. Why is Crocodile such like an important like figure in like One Piece? Think about it. Out of everybody he could have brought back, like Enel could be back right now, but he didn't. He brought back Crocodile. Why Crocodile? Maybe Crocodile was like ancient. You know what I mean? Because he's sand. And, and sand doesn't age. Because think about like rocks. Rocks, they do age, technically speaking, because like you could predate like a, a rock, but they don't age. And if this man's sand, he probably never aged. Never died. It's still alive, but he knows about all this stuff. Because think about it. He was searching for Pluton back in Alabasta. Which means he knows about the ancient weapons. So there's probably other things he knows about for sure. But they get a chance to say yeah, And he and really knows because he was part of the Roger Pyre. So Roger Pyre said know everything. So... He's crazy one later though. But I think what a lot of us theorized came true in a roundabout way. The Mother Flame definitely seemed connected to an ancient weapon when it was used on Lucia. Mm -hmm. Specifically, it seemed like Uranus. And FYI, Uranus was always gonna be the sky yeah, weapon, yes, since is. Uranus was the personification of the sky and literally translate to sky or heaven in English. And we weren't wrong, but it's a bit more complicated. The Mother Flame clearly turned out to be fuel for it, and fractions of the Mother Flame can be used to activate Uranus right. to devastate results so the what if the the mother flame has to do with nika hey i'm just saying he's the sun god so hey that would make, had, make a lot of sense uranus I'm no big saying. shocker there but needed the mother flame missing piece of the puzzle to use it this is why York is potentially useful too, because she can potentially fill in any blanks that the world government has about the Mother Flame. I am curious to learn more about the Mother Flame though. I can see it potentially being something that keeps on burning if it's held in the right conditions, like an Olympic flame what? sort of, and if you take it bit by- What if Luffy just eats it? And now he becomes the Mother Flame rubber man. I don't know. It will just wild. replenish and you can keep using it. However, who knows? A mother flame could be finite or perhaps it could be recreated from Yo, scratch repeatedly stupid. if you know how. Either way, it definitely gives me Prometheus vibes. Mm. Prometheus being the one who gave fire to humans in the first place. A what? lot of unknowns at the moment, but still this was some big news from Vegapunk. Vegapunk continues to spill the beans on the world government. He reveals that Lucia Kingdom was destroyed by an ancient weapon activated with quote unquote my mother flame. He says, and I quote, I'm so sorry for letting the ancient weapons be revived i don't know who used it but i'm totally sure the world is at risk of flooding again end quote first off i'm so glad that the world now knows what happened to lelucia because i would have hated to see erased and forgotten just like that but yeah. looks like vegapunk doesn't know the world government was behind the lelucia tragedy which is important to note as this chapter goes on it really emphasizes that there is quite a lot even vegapunk doesn't know and even less genius like characters like rayleigh and crocus know a lot more Rokus. about some of the most Crocodile. important stuff than Vegapunk mm -hmm. does, as we'll get to. What's up, Thus, Crocus? even with this worldwide reveal, there are many things he simply can't shed light on because he also doesn't know. But at least he can let everyone know that they are at risk of flooding, though I don't know what he expects most can do about it, even if they have that information. That's but we'll true. talk about that you know and crazy? what it means. Was it called the Baratier? Like, they would never, be, they would never sink. They have unlimited food on their boat. Actually, they probably hunt for it. But they fish 
So, I mean, they could survive. If Loki, anybody can survive on the boat in one piece if you just fish. To be honest, just live on the boat. I think your boat can do repairs. Because if you stay in the water for too long, don't your boat erode? So I think you gotta take like, your boat to water sometimes to get it repaired. I don't know. It's for revolutionaries hey. later on. We cut to Moda, the milkmaid turned revolutionary from the Lucia Kingdom, and to Vice Admiral Coma. Stop. Both were in Ace's cover story adventures as he searched for oh. Blackbeard. So nice to see Oda putting them together here again in this chapter. I love this man's attention to detail and how he rewards close readers. Anyways, both Moda and the sure. Vice Admiral have shock reactions when they discover the Lucia Kingdom was destroyed by the Dude, what's smoker gonna in Proden's Kingdom, King Elizabello II asks one of his advisors to check on the Lucia kingdom at once since there's what no kingdom? news about the Lucia disappearing. <laughs> gone, but this huh? reminds me of what Vegapunk said before too. Because of the nature of the world now and how it consists of many islands instead of continents, it really makes it a lot easier to control people. If people don't ever leave their villages usually because the ocean is considered dangerous, then it's mm -hmm. easier to control them and lie to them. An entire island can disappear and people may not figure it out because of the nature of this world of islands. Clearly True. looking at the end result, the flooding back then made it easier for the world government to divide, conquer, and control the world. We then cut to New Marine Fort and we see Sengoku and Tsuru's reactions. Sengoku is stuffing snacks into his mouth because he's stressing it it, while Sakazuki is dealing with it in That's another way idea, and we see Without he's stressing. burning a cigar in his hand. Sakazuki Smoker? says and I quote, oh. so you are really saying everything. Back to Egghead and to Stussy specifically. As I mentioned last chapter, after Stella's death, she was having a Mewtwo-esque struggle wondering what's the point of living on as a clone. She has no more raison d'etre aka reason to live. It turns out though that she did have a bond with the other CP0 members even though she prioritized Vegapunk when it came down to it. She asks Edison to allow her to let Kaku go because she saw Cypherpole agents falling to the middle of the island with no way to escape. Edison apologizes for ordering her to betray Cypherpole since he knows Stussy really does see them as her friends, Stussy. despite her very real loyalty to Vegapunk. Edison uses this to make her see her own humanity, saying such conflict in your heart is what makes you human, Stussy. We then catch up to greedy trader York, who is shocked York. that Stella knew about the mother flame being stolen, since she didn't synchronize any of her secret activities to punk records. And that right there is how we can explain how some satellites can know things that others don't. They can pick and choose what they synchronize. Right. And I told you guys, York will be a big threat. Only a Vegapunk can challenge Vegapunk, it seems. And here, York does in fact deduce that since Vegapunk knew the world government is coming for him, he wouldn't just quote unquote, hide the special Denden Mushi. She calls the five elders and says, I know where the special Denden Mushi is. What's the a ancient Denden robot Mushi? is oh. currently protecting it, end quote. So yes, that hype Joy Boy ally that has been randomly shown here and there, albeit in hype fashion, is now becoming a focal point and a target for the elders. Meaning, mm. we will finally get to see what it is capable of and hopefully learn more about it. Then we get a huge reveal from Vegapunk. He says that Joy Boy planned to pass on all three ancient weapons to later generations. Vegapunk doesn't understand why Joy Boy tried to do such a thing, what? and that's why he cannot say which side is good or evil in this conflict. So finally we have Vegapunk's reason for why he can't label Joy Boy as the good guy in the Ah, oh, I see. Because if you really think about it, um let's just because like there's like a side there's a sense for both sides. One side can perceive what they're doing as good. No, let's like perceive what they're doing as good. Like in a war, there is no technically there's like no wrong side. It's all about uh, perspective. What Joy Boy could be doing is like rebelling and destroying systems and all types of stuff because he wanted to be free, right? And because of that, he left a path of destruction which destroyed order in the world. And what the government is doing is like, okay, we gotta stop that. We need more control. So do certain things to gain more control to fix it. So I understand where Vegapunk's coming from. Like, I generally do. So, are you guys on Team Joy Boy or Team Government? I don't know. I'm like neutral. I, I don't know. I want to say government because the government it's essential because our government you can't function. The world be in shambles. No law. It's like, dude, I don't know. This war and you can understand where he's coming from since why would you want to pass down ways of destroying the world and creating unspeakable horrors for the people in it? 
It's a good question. Really? And let me know hey. what you think the oh. reason is down in the comments. I do personally think that there will be a good reason for it. In our own world, we justify such weapons by saying they will deter war. But I don't know how reasonable that is here where the existence of other ancient weapons don't seem to be stopping the world government. Then there's the possibility that maybe the weapons can't be destroyed for good. So it's important to make sure they are passed down to the right people if possible. Or perhaps mm. within a weapon can lie the key to reversing its effect as well. Like maybe Uranus holds the possibility of lowering the sea level too. It's all speculation at this point, but that I assume we'll sense. get a good explanation and that Joy Boy won't turn out to be the evil guy Vegapunk fears he could have been. But I gotta admit, an evil Joy Boy would be a pretty crazy twist. Vegapunk is certain that I mean, all it wouldn't will be, be that evil because when you liberate something, then again, you're not doing it like... It, like I said, it's all comes down to perspective because how the government can view Joy Boy would be like a menace, right? But other people can be like, oh, he's just a liberator. And, you know, in reality, he's actually just a demon. But he's fighting for a people's side that they uh, are biased towards. So, I don't know. Clear one day too, and says as much. He says, and I quote, And on that day, the world will be at risk of flooding again. This is my warning, end quote. Speaking of ancient weapons, we see Shirahoshi and Fishman reactions when Vegapunk talks about Joy Boy passing on ancient weapons. FlexJobs is the number one job site to find remote, work from home, and flexible schedule job opportunities since 2007. Vegapunk adds that there are still many mysteries about the Void Century, but there's one group of people that knows everything, the Roger Pirate Pirates. King and his crew. As Vegapunk talks about the Roger Pirates, we get to see Crocus in Twin Cape, but don't worry, that's not all. Vegapunk says they learned the truth about that part of history. Why did they disappear without telling anyone anything? Why didn't they act? And as if Oda wants to give them a chance to defend themselves, that's we true. cut to the Dark King, Rayleigh himself at Shockey's ripoff bar. Shockey is beating a pirate while she talks to Rayleigh. Ray san, she says, you're drinking too much. It isn't like you to be getting drunk like that. Rayleigh is sitting on the stool with his head on top of the bar. He's clearly getting drunk. He says, ugh, I'm just an old geezer now. And you talk too much, Vegapunk. An old man like you shouldn't ruin the young generation's excitement, idiot. He excitement? places his drink on the bar while he smiles and gets nostalgic, saying, Now it's their quote-unquote fun. Right, Roger? So nothing surprising there. We know that Oda feels the same as Rayleigh, and he would never let Vegapunk spill all the beans and ruin the fun before the Straw Hats can discover it themselves. The editor reaffirms once again, saying, and I quote, He who knows the truth simply laughs, end quote. And we already knew that truth from Roger and Laughtale, but here we have it coming up again. All in all, Vegapunk dropped some big reveals, but didn't, and Oda wouldn't let him, in fact, ruin the final hilarious truth slash discovery for the Straw Hats. Either way, the people of the world now have a better idea of the world they are living in, of the dangers they face, and maybe even who their enemy might be. I personally think this will make the Dragon. work of Dragon the Revolutionaries easier because people now know that if they sit by and do nothing, they could just be waiting to drown, or even worse, for an ancient weapon to erase them. And chances are, we still get some more crazy reveals from Vegapunk, even if he doesn't know everything because yes, they know where the special Denden Mushi should be, but for Denden now, Mushi? they are nowhere near actually destroyed. I'm like so tired. It would be like, a flex though if Vegapunk said everything he had to say. I had no sleep last night. I'm running on four and a half hours, okay? Do I look dead in the eyes? If so, I apologize. Oh my god, I keep rhyming. Oh my god, I keep timing. I mean, I keep trying. I mean, I'm just flying. I'm just saying. Now I'm just crying. Why did my voice get higher? Like, higher pitch? That's weird. Like, just before they were about to destroy the Denden Den Mushi. So that What's they Den literally Den accomplished Mushi? nothing. And by that time, Luffy and the others are already long gone having escaped. Hey, Let's that. see if it pans out, something like that. But if you enjoyed learning more about Joy Boy and the Void hey, Century... Let me guys know in the comment section down below. Do you think Joy Boy is a bad guy? I'm open to it because I do definitely think it's possible. But I'm going to say neutral. Because I don't think either side is like wrong. It's just like perspective, like I said. <sighs> If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe as well. And I'm going to link to the next time. See ya.